Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. This is section 11.6, which I believe is the last section of trigonometry, basically. And this is a fun little section. It's not something that's typically covered in a trigonometry course. Uh, it is something fairly exciting if you're into computer graphics and you want to kind of understand why matrix multiplication shows up everywhere. So, this is what we're going to consider now is we're going to consider what happens when you rotate. So the idea here is we have a point P, okay, and point P has coordinates x comma y. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have this rotation g of phi, and phi is just another Greek letter. It's, you can write it as a circle with a line through it, or you can just write it like that. That's phi, okay. It's another Greek letter. Typically it's used for the other angle when you have two angles that you're talking about. So in this case we do have two angles we're talking about. The point P makes an angle with the coordinate axes and then we're going to rotate through an angle phi that is not the same as the angle that P makes with the axes. Okay? So we're going to take and apply this rotation to P such that we'll get a point P prime that has coordinates x prime and y prime. Okay? So we're asking what happens to a point that we rotate through the origin of an angle of phi. right? So how do we describe x prime and y prime? Well, if we convert p to polar coordinates, we're going to have r comma theta. Okay, so just to kind of understand what we're talking about here, let's say this is point p. r is that distance from the origin, and theta is that angle that that line makes with the x-axis. Okay, now if we're going to rotate around the origin, then the new point is going to have the same distance from the origin, and then the angle is going to be theta plus phi. That's it. Right? So in polar coordinates, it's very trivial to rotate around the origin. Right? Okay? Uh, let's convert this back to rectangular coordinates because if we're doing computer graphics, uh, our monitors don't exactly draw with uh, polar coordinates. They want xy coordinates for the different points in the plane. Okay? So we know that x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sine theta. That's how these two values, these coordinates are related. Okay, so x prime has to equal r cos theta plus phi and y prime has to equal r sine of theta plus phi. Okay, and remember last section we talked about what happens when we need to add two angles. Well, we can rewrite these as r times cosine of theta cosine of phi okay and then minus sine theta sine phi okay that's the x prime and the y prime we can rewrite that as r of sine theta cosine phi plus sine phi cosine theta. So he kind of plays with the order a little bit here. Okay. Now what? Well, our cos theta is x. Our sine theta is y. So x prime is equal to our cos theta, which is x, x times cos phi. I'm going to add a plus here because I didn't mean to put that mark down. And then our sine theta, so minus y, times sine phi, and the y prime is equal to, uh, we have an r sine theta, so it's y times cos phi, plus there's r times cos theta, so that's an x sine phi, okay? And we can rewrite these a little bit more eloquently. x prime is equal to cos phi x minus sine phi times y and y prime is equal to sine phi of x plus cos phi of y. I'm going to put these in parentheses so we know that we're not taking the angle of x. We're not taking cosine of phi times x. Okay, So these four numbers, cosine, sine, sine, cosine, right? We can write these four numbers this way. We can write as cosine phi minus sine phi, sine phi, and cosine phi. Okay? And if you're familiar with linear algebra at all, you recognize this instantly as a matrix, but we are not yet, so uh, <laughs> we're not quite to linear algebra yet. We'll do it in a minute. 
in later sections, but this is the uh, this is a matrix that's a two by two matrix. There's two columns and two rows, and um, we can multiply um, this matrix by the x y coordinates. So let me write this out what that's going to look like. So we start. We have cosine of phi minus sine of phi sine of phi cosine of phi times x, y. And the way you multiply matrices is this will end up being uh, cosine phi times x minus sine of phi times y. So we take x times this one, y times that one. And now we take sine of phi times the x coordinate plus cosine phi of y. Okay, and that will be your new x, y coordinates. And that's how it's done. Um, so let's take uh, with phi is equal to pi over two, then the matrix, well cosine, the matrix is gonna be cosine of phi is zero, minus one, one, zero. And so for x, y coordinates, if we rotate by 90 degrees, we're going to get minus y and then x. Okay, so if we had the point five comma seven, we rotate through pi over two degrees, then we will get the new point, which is going to be at minus seven comma five. Let's draw what that looks like. So we have five, seven. This is point P. We're gonna rotate by 90 degrees. It's gonna end up over here, minus seven comma five. Okay, that's what's gonna happen when it rotates 90 degrees pi over two degrees. That's all there is to it. It's a little bit simple there. If, if you're confused on how this works, just, you know, he kind of gives a little bit more examples on how to do matrix multiplication. Um, and this is one of those applications for matrix multiplication. This is why matrices show up so much in computer graphics. Um, there is, for three dimensions, they use actually four matrices because you can do translation if you do the matrix multiplication in a particular way. There is a trick that they use to allow you to move points, not just rotate them or stretch them. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Take care, and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right, you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much, bye-bye.